Hey guys, and welcome to this week's Q&A for DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. I have a couple of questions for you today. Every Friday, I answer your questions. So if you have questions, just leave me your questions under those videos. And in the next Friday episode, I will answer those questions. So let's start with the first one. Not about this question, but noise reduction only available in the studio version. Yes, there's a couple of features that is only available in the studio version. But if you have the free version, there's actually a way how you can use noise reduction even in the free version. I will show you that. Let's say I have an image that has some uh, noise in it and I want to reduce that. So if you have the studio version, you can just come here up to effects and look for the noise reduction. There's a couple of ways where you can do this also in the color page. I'm not talking about those ones now. So what you can do in the free version is actually come to the fusion page. If you don't have the fusion page, I mean, on this point, I already made so many videos on my video, uh, on my channel, but you can have all of the pages, you don't need the studio version for that. There's a shortcut for that. You have to have have to give it a shortcut. There's a video here on my channel. So check out this video first. But if you are on the Fusion page, what you can do is click the media here and then say shift space and then you can select your effects or you can also just come up here to effects. And now we look for remove and then we'll see here remove noise. So what you can do is drag and drop this in here. And now you have this one here. And if you click it, you have a couple of different options. I will not go over all of that here in this video, but basically you can now toggle between red, green, and blue and reduce the amount by the softness of red, green, and blue. And also later you can bring back all the details by detail green, detail red. And how you want to do this is like this. Let's close the effect here. You have the window here. And you can always come up here to this icon and change your viewer to this one channel. So let's, for example, let's say red. I can see all the red and now I can make the red softer until it's even soft, soft, soft. But I can also bring in the red detail. So what you now have to know about this tool is it's a balance act. You have to somehow bring red softness in, some detail back in. So it's a process, but it is available in the free version. And you would just go through all of those channels until your image is less has less noise in it and you have to be careful because if you increase the details too much you actually increase the noise even more so it's about like i said every picture every image is a balance act every time i try to do something in the fusion page on my 2022 ipad pro the app crashes i never have been able to do nothing on it so i have a couple of answers to that so number one it could be we figured out in our series that somehow the m2 crashes more than the m1 so it seems that the m1 is a little bit more stable i don't know why but the positive of that is that maybe this is just an issue on the software side not the chip itself i think maybe later when some new versions come out, maybe the chip will even be more stable. This is one opinion about this. But then the second one is when I read your comment, it really looks like everything you do crashes. That's not true. I mean, there are packs that you can download, like for example, from Motion VFX. They are all made in the Fusion page. If it would crash all the time, you couldn't use any of them. We even have a transition pack for DaVinci Resolve specifically made. It's all in the Fusion page made, but you can use those and then you don't have to recreate them. This works. Or even like what I just showed you with the noise reduction is in the Fusion page. So it doesn't crash there. What many people try to do is the tracking and the tracking crashes doesn't matter if it's M1 or M2, and the most times it crashes. But for that, we will talk about this in a second even, but for that, I made a couple of videos, some workarounds in the color page. So definitely check out that. Hi, different question. I currently connect my external hard drive and I can't see the number of items in a folder. How can I see the number of items in a folder? So what he's talking about, if we, for example, open files, normally when you are just on your iPad, you always see here six items, eight items, the folders, and if you go even deeper, right, then you see here five items, two items, and so on and so on. And if you have have an external hard drive yes the files app doesn't show us i was digging into this there is no way how to activate that that would be amazing like on mac you can change some of the settings i couldn't find them so maybe you will know how to do this because it would be amazing to not download a new app so the next step is to actually download a different file system app but i'm honest i tried a couple of ones and the most of them i didn't like because many of them are not just files app, they are actually also replacing your browser and then you can download stuff, which is amazing in itself, but kind of like destroys the purpose. So my answer here is, yeah, 
we're kind of fucked with the iPad at the moment. I hope that this will be changing in the future. Do you think I can make edits like Ali Abdal with Resolve on for iPad? He's an amazing YouTuber. I like his style of content. And the simple answer is yes, of course you can do. The reason why his videos look so amazing, there's a couple of more stuff in the background that comes into his videos. He's an amazing storyteller. When he scripts his videos, he looks for story patterns and everything. And when he uses B-roll, he always complements what he's talking about. So if he talks about something, he has a catalog of amazing shots that he prepared. I was once listening to Ali Abdal and Pat Flynn in the podcast, Smart Passive Income, and he talked about the business side of that. So for example, one tip he does, he sat down like a weekend and he created all kinds of different B-roll material. So looking at the keyboard, looking at him walking, looking at a book, like everything he could imagine, he wrote a list and then he created those B-rolls. And now when he edits, he just has to recreate them he can use the B-roll from his B-roll library. So what I can recommend for you as a filmmaker, try, especially if you are a YouTuber, try to make your own library. This will make your edit so much faster in the future. And then there is nothing fancy going on, no fancy transitions, and even we can do transitions on DaVinci. So simple answer, yes, you can do it. It's more about the planning and how you use them in your videos and you can do this with DaVinci Resolve on the iPad, no problem. The next question comes from the German channel. Hallo Daniel, gibt es auf dem iPad Möglichkeiten einen Text in einem Objekt folgen zu lassen? So now he is basically asking about tracking, but also tracking a text onto like, let's say a building or something in your uh, image. And yes, so we already made a video about this and it's here in the Q&A series. So I would recommend if you watched until here, the Q&A series is amazing because I can't in like, Look at the titles. I can only place one tip in a title, but many times I have a couple of different tips that I answer or questions that I answer in the Q&A series. So I would recommend if you take it serious with DaVinci Resolve, you either get my masterclass so you learn everything that is inside there, or if it's for completely free and you have some ad advanced questions, look through the Q&A series. So where do I answer that one? Here in that one how to create text in a circle using DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. In this video, I also show you how you can use the color page and also stick something to an object. It works. And you can combine this technique with the more proper way of doing it. So for example, I have this video, object tracking, how to object track in DaVinci Resolve, because that is the way how it's not crashing on the iPad right now. And you can combine the two techniques. So from my other video, how I showed you how you can put media and text in the color page, this is the one step that you have to take from there. And then you can use even that technique or the technique that I should teach in the other video. Next question also comes from the German channel. Basically is asking, hey, to change the background, like from a green screen is no problem, that's easy. But in my case, I have a black background and people in a white silhouette and I have my problems doing that. So obviously I don't know exactly how your images look like, but I prepared something. So for example, I have an image here that looks like this. So we have black in the background, we have white silhouettes. I don't know if it's exactly like this, but I will show you the, the way you can do this. So I would now just simply go here into the effects and I look for 3D keyer. So with my 3D keyer, I can just drag and drop that one to my clip. And now I go into the inspector and here in the inspector, I have to change this one here to open FX overlay. And now I can se select the plus icon here and look for the black. And now what it does, if we look here, so sometimes you have to click like two or three times, second time click, now you see all the black is gone. So the color in the background doesn't really matter with the 3D keyer, you can select the colors and even different shades of the colors. So even if I now click, for example, that one, it will remove that person as well. So it's working. Now I see the background and can hit play. Okay, that's an image in the background, but if I replace that one here on the bottom with an image and with a video, you would see the video. So. This is the way how you can do this. I explain all of this in more detail in this video here, remove green screen. But the technique that I teach in this video is the same technique that you can use for a different type of background as well. That's it for this week's Q&A for DaVinci Resolve from the iPad. If you have any questions about DaVinci Resolve, just leave me your comments here under this video. I hope you liked this video. Hit like, subscribe, ding a ding in the bam bang gong, and we see us in the next video. I'm Daniel, bye.